Hi, my name is Vance Prescott and welcome to Youth Sunday. Our next spirituality and mental wellness seminar will be coming this Tuesday, May 17th, from 7 to 8.15 in the Fellowship Hall. The topic will be cultivating healthy habits. Join Jessica L. Whitney, PhD consulting psychologist, as she leads this seminar. Please support our mission trips this summer by purchasing a Moe's Taco Kit. The orders will need to be placed by tomorrow at 8 p.m. and will be picked up Tuesday between 5 and 5.30 here at the church. If you would like to purchase one, please ask any of us how to do so. There is also more information about the taco kits in your bulletin. Pentecost in the Park is coming up on Sunday, June 5th. We will have one service that morning at 9.30 a.m. Afterwards, the United Methodist men will be cooking lunch for us. We will have hot dogs and hamburgers and side dishes. Make sure to bring your own chair and join us as we celebrate the birthday of our church. Today we kick off our annual Nourish NC food drive each week for the next six weeks. We will collect a specific item. There is an insert in your bulletin that shows what items we are collecting each week. This week we will be collecting boxes of cereal. There will be a collection of boxes near Narthex and near the stairs. Thank you for your amazing support for the food insecure children in New Hanover County. Good morning, I am Bo Beam. Please join me in the call to worship found at the bottom of the screen. Joy is loose. And the giggles of the children. The whispers of the youth. The smiles of the adults. Praise is rising. For this glorious day. For God's abundant blessing. For good friends and loving families. There is joy and praise. In our hearts and in our songs. Good morning. I'm Matt Carson. I'm a freshman at Hoggard High School, um, and I will be reading the opening prayer for this morning service. Please bow your heads for prayer on this beautiful morning, and let us give thanks to the Lord for all he has given us. Dear Lord and Father, thank you that you promise us that where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst. Lord, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon each of us. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance 
and open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. It is you. Save the heart and soul of every man. It is you, Lord, who knows my weakness, who gives me strength with thine own hand. Lead me on, Lord, from temptation. Good morning. I'm Bennett Taylor. Today's affirmation of faith is a bit different than what we normally say on Sunday mornings. This is the World Methodist Social Affirmation. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again and in the Holy Spirit present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe God help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation. In each act of self-giving on behalf of others in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory, to be, to, glory be to God on high and on earth, peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence through the abuse of technology, which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come, thy kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Now take a moment to share the peace of Christ with those you love. Good morning. My name is Abigail Elliott. I'm in eighth grade at Leland Middle School, and I'll be reading Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your work to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compa compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. 
Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I am Sadler Selby, and the scripture lesson and our youth group's name, 412, comes from the Bible verse, 1 Timothy 412. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. This verse speaks to our youth group because it states what we all strive for on a daily basis, to set an example through our speech, through our conduct, through our love, through our faith. And in just a few minutes, you will be hearing words of testimony from two of our seniors who will be graduating this year. They have both set an example for us to follow, showing us how to live out 1 Timothy 4.12 in our daily lives. We will miss them greatly next year as they begin this new and exciting chapter of their lives. I want to take a few minutes to let you know what 412 is all about here at Redsley United Methodist Church. We are the teenagers of the congregation, starting at grade 6 and ending at grade 12. We meet weekly on Sunday nights from 5.30 to 7 in the Fellowship Hall. There are also many missions that we support as a youth group. We have adopted two children through Compassion International that we provide monetary support to every month. We support Mother Hubbard's Cupboard and assist with Meals on Wheels. This year we gave Christmas to six teenagers who otherwise wouldn't have had it through the Department of Social Services. We have also supported Snipes Academy through our local congregations for children through the donation of snacks for their classroom. We look forward to doing more for Snipes Academy right here in downtown Wilmington. Due to COVID restriction, we, restrictions, we were unable to travel for our mission trips this past summer. But we did serve our local community, working with Warm and with Willowdale Urban Farm. This summer, we are excited to be back on the road again. Our middle school mission team will travel to the refuge in Aiden, North Carolina, while our high school team will be serving with ASP in rural Virginia. For our youth to be able to participate in all these great activities, we have several fundraisers throughout the year. You can, usually support our, you can actually support our mission trips today by ordering your Moe's Taco Kit using the insert found in your bulletin. None of these activities would be possible for our growing youth program without the love and support of this church. Thank you for empowering the youth of Wrightsville United Methodist Church and giving us the opportunity to make our mark on this world as positive Christian role models.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Bella Hawker, and I'm a ninth grader at New Hanover High School. I am so excited to be with you here today and to share a story about our youth first, 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no one despise you for your youth, but be thou an example of believers in the world, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. I want to share with you a little story that my mom has reminded me of time and time again about a trip when I was maybe six or seven years old, and she had this photo of me. We were on a trip to Salt Lake City, Utah to go snow skiing, and I guess I had previously been to a church camp or Sunday school, and I learned how to make rip crosses. I apparently wanted to share them with everyone in the airport, so I just plopped down on the airport floor and made as many as possible, just so I could give them out to people. In our verse today, it tells us, no matter how young we are, we should always be an example to others in what we say, how we act, and what we do. My mom reminds me that she and dad asked me what I was doing, handed out pieces of paper to strangers all over the airport, and I informed her, I'm spreading the love of Jesus, mama. She told me she was a little bit nervous about how anyone could react, but I put a smile on so many travelers in that airport that day, spreading my love for Jesus. I have made little kits for you with instructions on how to make rip crosses. I hope that you can enjoy them with family and friends and have fun making them with God in mind. God keeps doing immeasurably more than we ask for or imagine. So let's respond to his generosity by being an example from him to others. Amazing things happen when we do. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for continuing to bless and comfort us, and that way we always give you the glory, that we bow our heads in humble motion to offer our praise and gratitude. Open your eyes to the gift of everlasting grace that you give us as we witness about your power and your word to others, no matter our age. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Ronan Hoff, and I'm a 7th grade student at Wilmington Academy of Arts and Sciences. We come now to that time of worship when we put to use one of God's greatest gifts to us, and that is the gift of prayer. Please remember to pray today and every day, especially for those listed in the bulletin. Let us pray. God, you are gracious, and that is good. 
because we are slow learners. You show us the way, but we still are convinced that we can find some kind of shortcut, a way to repair the damage in our lives that won't take too much time or effort. We keep looking for a way that is safe and certain and obvious and easy, but every apparent shortcut turns into a dead end. Save us from our own foolishness. Confound and confront us until we come to our senses. Teach us the humility we need if we want to be wise. Give us, patience. Give us the patience we need if we hope to accomplish any lasting good. Grant us the spirit of obedience that we need if we want to be disciples. Console those who are dealing with struggles and sorrows. Give strength to those who are easily tempted and settle our anxious minds. We pray with faith and hope because you have already done so much for us. There is no doubt that your love for us is real and reaches to the ends of the earth. We thank you for the teachers and mentors who have cared enough to speak the truth in love for us. We thank you for insight that comes after struggle, for hard-won maturity and undeserved second and third and fourth chances. We thank you for role models who are willing to be honest and who show us that you don't just call an extraordinary that you don't just call extraordinary people to follow Jesus. You call ordinary people and make them extraordinary. Now continue the work you are doing, O Lord, to make us extraordinary servants and witnesses for you in this world. We make our prayer today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the same Jesus who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I am Walt Carson. I am a freshman at Southeast Area Technical High School. There are many ways to give at Wrightsville UMC. You could give online at rightsfulumc.org or scan the QR code found on the pew rack. You could give on our app on your phone or mail a check to Rightsful UMC. Your generous gifts go towards continuing the ministries of Rightsful UMC and fund our 412 youth program.
Good morning. My name is Madeline Elliott, and I'm a senior at New Hanover High School. I've been attending Wrightsville United Methodist since birth. I was baptized, confirmed, and will soon be graduating from this church. Over the years, I have been so lucky to have been given the opportunity to travel on mission trips and meet people that have greatly impacted my walk in faith. However, there is one person in particular that I can credit this youth group for giving me, my best friend, Emily Lane. The beginning of middle school brought an awkward transition time to teenage years, which included, but is not limited to, braces, bad haircuts, and boys. Um, thankfully, I was introduced to the 412 youth group that gave me an outlet to help me navigate the most awkward years of my life. This is where I had the privilege of being introduced to the pastor's daughter. We instantly clicked, and from then on, there were few times you'd see one of us without the other. Emily and I were attached at the hip every Sunday service 412, and I was frequently seen lunching with the lanes after church. Although it was fun going on trips and playing nine square with everyone, Emily was the first person that was able to help me understand what a relationship with God could look like outside of Sunday mornings. I finally understood what a Christian lifestyle meant for me on a daily basis. I found myself turning to God in little moments subconsciously and had a better understanding on how to spread his love to my peers. Now that I'm older and my relationship with God has grown, I am so grateful for my first few years in 412, and now I get to watch my little sister have similar experiences, and I can only hope she finds her own person to help her with her walk with Christ when I'm away at college. As I move to Connecticut in the fall, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do without seeing Emily every day. This church is all I've known the past 17 years, and I'm going to miss the community I've found here once I'm gone. I have to thank all the amazing leaders of 412. The, posit the positive influence I had growing up in this church has led me to where I am today. Christina, in particular, is the perfect example of a strong-willed role model, and I can't thank her enough for all she has done for me. I'm so excited to watch my little sister develop in this youth group and all she accomplish accomplishes here her next four years. I'd like to thank my mother and grandmother for supporting me through everything and being at every performance at church, soccer game, awards night, and every event in between. I love you two endlessly and can't thank you enough. And to my second family, the Lanes, thank you for all the love and hospitality over the years. The next lunch is on me. And finally, to my best friend, Emily, I love you and I'm so, so proud of the woman I've watched you become. You can expect many trips to Atlanta in the fall due to the separation anxiety I will have. I wish the youth group the best and can only tell my peers to enjoy your time while it lasts because it flies. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Emily Lane, and I'm graduating from New Hanover High School in just a couple of weeks. To say I've been looking forward to sharing with you today would be an incredible understatement. Since sixth grade, when my family moved to Wrightsville Beach, I've been listening to senior testimonies, sitting in awe of the big kids with such cool stories and experiences. Often in testimonies, though, it seems there is one huge moment in someone's life that changes their entire perception of faith, and they fall in love with Christ based on a singular experience. For me, though, I feel like my relationship with God has been just a gradual crescendo leading me to the place I'm in today. For the two of you at home that didn't know, um, my dad is Pastor Doug and my mom is Tara Lane, the Harbor District Superintendent. So I guess you could say I had no choice in going to church. Growing up, it was definitely a lot of shoving dresses on every Sunday, maybe even a few tears on the way to church, but I think that's normal. It was also met with a lot of reading the children's Bible with pictures um, as bedtime stories, watching tons and tons of Veggie Tales. I never doubted that God existed nor did I ever doubt his love for me. It was presented to me as a fact, never something that could have an opinion behind it. I grew up surrounded by Christ-loving parents and a Christ-loving family, and I could not be more thankful for that. I've been so blessed to have an upbringing like I did, and it doesn't stop with my parents. I've had Sunday school teachers, handbell and choir directors, and so much more who have taught me what it means to be a Christian, and I strive to follow the example I was taught every day of my life now. I've been blessed to be a member of 412 since sixth grade. Though I have a lot of memories from Sunday night youth groups of eggs smashing in hair and dodgeballs flying across the room, my most impactful memory was on our mission trip in Costa Rica when I was just a freshman. I'd been on a few mission trips before to Hinton Rural Life Center in Western North Carolina as a middle schooler, but this was a whole new ball game. Not only were we flying to a completely different continent, but we were going with the high schoolers. 
I will never forget how intimidated I felt to be rooming with juniors and seniors with so much life experience. I mean, these people were old and wise. Of course, I wasn't alone. My trusty freshman companion, Miss Madeline Elliott, bunked right above me, sat next to me on every bus and plane ride, and was by my side throughout it all. We met at our first youth group Sunday as sixth graders, but at this point freshman year, we were inseparable, and obviously still are. I remember one day we went to church with locals in Costa Rica, and everything was in Spanish, so I understood maybe 2% of it. However, I felt a connection to the service and the people in it. I felt like the language barrier did little in keeping us from finding a connection through a relationship with the same great loving Father. Near the end of the service, it came time for the pastor to pray, to, for the pastor to pray and this was the moment I'll never forget. The preacher began praying aloud and every single person in the congregation also prayed out loud. No one knew what anyone else was saying and no one cared. Their relationship with God was so powerful with each individual that they all talked to him about their own needs and gave their own thanks to him. There was something so beautiful about witnessing the power and connection between God and each person in that room. It didn't matter to anyone what someone else might be saying. It mattered that they got to speak to God, their confidant, their friend, and their savior. I had never seen a room of people so invested and deeply rooted in their faith, and I will never go about my life without striving to have the same strength in my own faith. I'm so thankful for the opportunity I had to visit Costa Rica and learn so much through 412 and through this church. My involvement in the Methodist Church is a huge chunk of who I am and how I choose to spend my time. While it starts here in the local church, I've found such a community in North Carolina Conference youth events. Every summer since becoming a youth, I've filled my time with week-long week -long events that have changed my life. After being a camper for a few years, I began running for leadership position after leadership position, slowly growing in confidence until finally, for the past two years, serving as president of the North Carolina Conference Youth. This means I sit in on meetings with the bishop and voice my opinion. I'll speak at annual conference next month, and I chair legislative affairs sessions with fellow youth where we talk about social justice ideas that are important to us, and we share our faith-based stance with legislative officials. My experience as president has taught me so much about conf confidence and leadership, but above all, faith. My relationship with God has become so much more than anything superficial. I rely on him in every aspect of my life. As I move away to college in Atlanta next year, I lean on him every day to give me strength and confidence going into a future full of uncertainty. It can be so overwhelming and stressful to think about moving to a campus where I literally know not a single person, but knowing that I'll have a friend in Jesus gets me past the anxieties. Of course, it's because of my wonderful mom and dad that I got to spend the last seven years of my life at Wrightsville UMC, surrounded by the most loving church family that you can find. With, with a youth director like the amazing Christina Norville, it's impossible to feel like you could ever be alone. Not to mention Jackson, Lori, Christy, Pam, Jack, Barbara, Casey, and of course, Carrie, our fantastic praise band director, who's been singing and playing next to me since the day she and I met in 2015. She taught me the song Oceans that I sang at my first youth Sunday at 12 years old and also chose to sing today. The people at Wrightsville United Methodist Church have nurtured me into the Christ-loving Jesus fanatic that I am now. There's not a person who knows me that doesn't also know how on fire I am for God, and I, can't, I can thank you all for that. I could not be more blessed to have been a part of this community and to have established a foundation of faith that I can continue to grow during my next four years at Emory University and throughout the rest of my life. Thank you. Nash Gould, Noble Middle School. Hi, my name is Vance Prescott, seventh grade at Noble Middle School. Hi, my name is Ronan Hoff, and I go, I'm in, in seventh grade, and I go to Walsh Middle School. My name is Bo Beeman, and I'm in seventh grade at Walsh Middle School. Hi, my name is Grant Clepping, and I'm in seventh grade, and I go to Cape Fear Academy. My name is Ben I'm in eighth grade, I go to Walsh. <laughs> 
Hi, my name is Matt Carson. I go to Hoggart High School. I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Samantha Murphy. I go to Hoggart High I'm in 8th grade at Noble Middle School. Hi, my name is Taylor Pearson. I'm in 7th grade and I go to Noble. Hi, my name is Isabel Primavera. I'm in 7th grade at Trust Middle. <coughs> Hi, my name is Sadler Selby and I'm a 7th grader at Noble Middle School. Hi, my name is Bennett Taylor. I'm an 8th grader at Myrtle Grove Middle School. Hi, my name is Walt Carson, and I'm a ninth grader at CTEC. Hi everyone, I'm Jackson Davenport. I am a junior at Hoggard High School. We ask you, the congregation, to please join us in the traditional United Methodist Youth Fellowship Benediction. It is from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. This is how we end every 412 youth group and life group. If you have anyone near you, please cross your right arm over your left arm and hold the person's hand that is on either side of you. The words of the benediction are found on the screen. After the benediction is read, everyone twists out to your right. Just watch the youth and you will catch on quickly. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We thank you for worshiping with us today here at Wrightsville, and we hope to see you back next Sunday.